Hi, welcome to Whitpixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Whitpixel, and we'd like to thank Salaya Beach Houses for sponsoring this episode. Salaya are based in Dumaguete in the Philippines um, and is a great black sand um, macro um, area. So, so some great macro opportunities on black sand. Um, please head on over to salayabeachhouses.com. That's as it sounds. And Salaya is S-A-L-A-Y-A. -A -A, so it's salayabeachhouses.com. Um, I'm joined by a frequent traveller, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi. I'm looking forward to getting back to the Philippines, actually. So, yeah, it's a, yeah. a favourite destination of mine. So it's great yeah. to hear that it's beginning to open up out there again. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, really good news. Place like, place like Dumaguete and Alao and, and, well, Alao and all the other wonderful places in the Philippines, mm. the Philippines are, are certainly starting to, to become available, which is great news. Um, and, you know, I thought, well, I thought really, um, Alex has been doing some travelling. Um, so I thought, um, obviously, given that none of us have been travelling as much as we, we normally do, um, how did it go, Alex? How was how was travelling? Where have you been? Um, I, I've actually managed quite a bit of travel in the last few months, probably as much as I normally normally would um, through that period. So um, in between, we're talking now between November 2021 and through to, um, it's now the beginning, it's now February 2022. And I've um, yeah went away to the Maldives in in November um, 2021, and then also to the Red Sea at the, sort of the turn of December, and then in in early January um, went off to the uh, to the to the Cayman Islands to run to run workshops there. So yeah, it's been really great to be back on the road. I would say the first thing is that it is wonderful to to be back doing what we you know we we love doing. Um, being yep. out there in the field, it is every trip feels like a, a fantastic reunion, not just with the diving and the marine life that you love, but particularly the people, um, yep. you know, the, the friends that you have in resorts that you haven't seen for a few years. And, you know, lots of us have favorite resorts we visit most years. And and so seeing those people is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, yep. Seeing, um, you know, dive stuff and then seeing, you know, the other divers that you've shared so many experiences with down the years people you travel with, dive buddies and things, and getting back out there and, and just doing doing what you love. And, you know, what you see on trips is, you know, you know, the the restrictions, the 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 the, the worries about about COVID and everything for the last few years. You know, it, it's it's it takes a stress on people, irrespective of whether you've, you know, had to suffer with the disease or not. You know, yeah. just the whole living in that world is stressful. And you yeah. get back out there into the sun, into clear blue water. And you yep. go underwater and you just see, you know, the stress drain away from people and, mm. you know, they get some sun and they get it. And it's just, yeah. So it's wonderful. And diving is a great, you know, particularly, you know, out on boats in the fresh air, in the sun, um, you know, um, one thing we were joking about, one of the workshops is it's like, well, we can't hug each other when we see each other, you know, when we meet at the beginning of the trip. But on your safety stops under the boat, <laughs> you, can, you can do all your catching up then. So, yeah, so that's kind of really, really fun. So, yeah, no, really great to be back out there seeing friends, both, you know, from trips gone by who you're traveling with again and also out there. So, yeah, really, um, you know, so that's my overriding memory of it all. Just just fantastic to be back out there taking pictures, seeing fish meeting you know meeting marine life and then seeing all your friends from around the world and i look forward to visiting the you know over the coming year or so the other destinations that i've been desperate to get back to as they begin to open up um yeah on the photography front um which i know is what you really want me to talk about um it's it was also quite interesting because you know i have been diving in here in the uk throughout the pandemic but you know not with the same level of intensity of a trip and what I found on both my first two trips is that my photo gear had niggly little issues with it. Nothing that stopped me shooting, but yep. just situations where particularly batteries were really, you know, stuff just wasn't working as reliably. You know, you, you put it together at home, you take three or four test shots, it's all working. You then go down on a dive and expect it to take 200 shots without an issue. And little things here and there don't work, you know, uh, fiber optic cables have been damaged, you know, yep. um, batteries, leak detector batteries are low, flash trigger batteries are low. And so so actually what I did on my first two trips back is I actually took totally different camera gear on both trips. So different yep. strobes, different housing, different camera, so that all my gear had a really intensive workout so that it was kind of getting back into that. Because, you know, what I found down the years 
is all our underwater photography gear. What it likes is being used. What it doesn't yep. like is sitting around. And I've always said to people, yep. you know, my gear is always super reliable, but it's super reliable because I'm always using it. The, yep. the problems are always the people who use it far less and it sits on shelf for six months. So I would recommend to anyone who's traveling is actually, if you've got a trip coming up and you haven't been away for a while, get those cameras out and don't just charge them up and test them once. Actually charge them up, take a couple of hundred photos around the house. You know, don't blast your underwater strobes on land because they, they might overheat, but, yep. you know, spend, you know, just to have the, what I you know do is I actually have the camera on all turned on on the table next to my, my, my desk when I'm working and I'll reach yep. over and take five pictures. Then I'll get back on, write an email, reach over, take another 10 pictures and, and over the yep. course of an hour and a half, take, you know, a few hundred pictures and, and just give it a good workout. Um, and I think that's as important as putting it together is actually yeah, giving it a cycle. So I was going to backtrack a bit because I think the other thing that we we probably all have done in the pandemic is is because we couldn't spend money on traveling to exotic locations and, and to some extent our diving opportunities were limited. Um, we we spent the income that we would have spent on travel opportunities on new bits of camera gear. That's very um, true. Yeah. And, and the worst place to figure out how something works is on the dive boat just before you pop over the side when you are now traveling so you know i think i think really it's really important you know all those new toys that you've gone out and bought um you know there's lots of stuff you can do on land without getting in the water to get familiar with them but make sure that they're familiar that you know how they work you know how to adjust the settings um and you know how you're going to attach it to your housing and all the other thousand and one things that you need to do with any item of new yeah. any new item of yeah gear. just because um, the 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 box says this fits on your gear yeah. That was before you go, because you know there, there, there's a there's a slew of things going on in wet pixel at the moment it's about strobe compatibility and different manufacturer strobes being not compatible with some and compatible with others. You know this is all information you really don't want to be discovering in Dumaguete. <laughs> yeah. um, you know you want to be discovering it at home. So 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 do do do, do your do your due diligence, do your research, mm -hmm. try it out, and and I would say you know along with that really. If you have the opportunity, I'm aware not everyone has the opportunity, but sometimes an opportunity you can make happen. Try and put it all together and get in the water with it somewhere. It doesn't need to be somewhere exotic or glamorous. Your local swimming pool, you know, duck pond, <laughs> whatever, you know, but, but somewhere where you can get underwater and start using stuff um, and, and trying it out, making sure everything is as you remember it being, making sure stuff's working, will generally really pay dividends um, in the field as well. So, so you know, some kind of pre-dive workup is probably a, a good thing to try. Now, OK, it's not an opportunity everyone has, but if you do, it's certainly worth doing, I think. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I think also remember that having not dived for a few years, you know, mm. on a normal dive week, you maybe get, you know, 15, 20 dives, if it's, uh, you know, something like that. If you start, you know, when you haven't dived for a few years, those dives are really precious. And sure. more so than if you, you know, when you're in a series where you're doing, you know, three or four trips a year or whatever. And as a result, I think you don't want to be wasting those chances. So it's perhaps mm. even it's more frustrating than normal when something stops you shooting. Sure. Um, and, you know, you're more out of practice, so you're more likely to make those silly mistakes and turn up with things. So it's, yeah, really valuable. The other thing to remember in terms of pre-dive checks is, a lot of dive resorts, you know, will have a swimming pool or something like that. And, you know, yep. you know, you can always get there, maybe, you know, use those first days to, you know, do a bit of extra checking and working out of stuff. You know, yep. just, you know, yep. you, you know, just take your face mask, um, you know, go in the pool and, and check things out. I think pre-preparation is what we're talking about. And something specifically, Alex, you mentioned batteries. Batteries are, are, are both the boon and the curse of, of underwater photography in that we rely on a lot of them. Again, this is stuff um, we, we've alluded to in another episode, but, you know, if you have a, a charger that allows you to condition your batteries, mm. you know, this is something to consider. It takes a while. My, mine, it takes probably 24 hours to, yeah. to recondition a set of 24 It's 24 really worth batteries. having so, those type of chargers, though. So, so you know, Get them, you know, a few a week or two before the trip. Get all your sets of batteries that you plan to use. Get them up. Put them through that recharging cycle. Get them fired up. I would also say that as a general rule, and there's kind of two sides to this because if it broke, it broke, don't fix it. But also things like leak detector batteries, you know, those coin batteries that, um, uh, that increasingly now with the um, strobe triggering the LED board batteries. I, I, right now, I'm I'm 
before I go on a trip, I replace them. I just take them out, put new ones in. Um, and and yeah, there is a, an element of, you know, it's working, so why replace it? But at the end of the day, I'm, no, I'm then dealing with a known entity. When I'm back to traveling as much as I normally do, I won't do for the moment. I just take out, put new ones in. They cost pennies. So no, it's, you, know, you certainly want to make sure you've got spares for all of them on your first trip back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's all, I, I tend to take two spares for each of them just in case because sometimes you fit a new one and it's maybe a bit you know you occasionally get yep, dead true. ones and, and things like that so it's, it's worth doing yep. I, I think the other change which i mean i'm making it all sound rosy is travel is a bit different these days um yes. and not in a bad way I, I would say there are positives and negatives um obviously the negatives are that you know it's there's um you know apart from the the obvious covid stuff there's um, there's probably a bit more bureaucracy to do form filling in, in addition to testing um, on a lot of destinations. Almost every country has slightly different rules and most of those countries are changing those rules at least monthly. Yeah. So um, the first thing I would say is, you know, familiar about a month before a trip, familiarize yourself with the rules of that destination. Um, yeah. And, you know, most destinations require some form of proof that you've been vaccinated, proof of a negative test before traveling and yep. a filling in of paperwork before you go. Um, yep. some, some are different. Our own country actually doesn't require um, you to have a test before you travel here and also no longer one when you arrive. Um, but yep. th that's, that's a little bit unusual. Um, and I'd familiarize yourself about a month before, but then two weeks before check again, because they mm. do change really quickly because, you know, people, the countries are all, you know, changing their rules at the moment, and it's really changing. Now, the the good news is, you know, the paperwork is a pain to do, but actually most of the destinations I've been to, the immigration has been a lot easier because you fill, up, fill in and upload so much information to them before you travel. When you get there, they scan your passport, they see that you filled in everything online, they get a big green tick on their, their computer screen, and in and, and you, you go. So yeah. that, you know, there are positives to doing all the, the, but some of the paperwork is a real pain to do. So, and, and I think the other thing is that travel, you know, a lot of airports are, are a lot quieter than they have been traditionally as well. And that helps that speed that process along as well. Yeah. But yes, as you say, it can be, it can be a bit of a bureaucratic nightmare getting it done. Um, I, I would say something else that, it, and, you know, I, I've always thought this would be the case, but it probably rams it home. You know, building a good relationship with a travel agent, someone who's booking your travel arrangements for you, really pays dividends with this. You know, if you've got a good relationship with your travel agent, then you can basically offload a lot of the home research that you need to yeah, do yeah, onto them. And, and they may well have access to sources of information that, that most people don't. So, so, you know, it's a good opportunity to use that connection if you have it with, with local travel operators and, and finding out what's going on. Well, and they'll also be aware of changes because the changes come thick yeah. and fast. You know, um, you know, I went to the Red Sea for a week, uh, for as an example, and the test I needed to do when I came back changed during the week I was away. And yeah. four days later, it changed again. If I'd been there longer, I'd have had to do even more. You know, so, you know, as variants come and go and as rules change, you know, it's it's a very flexible time so you need to to be on top of these things um, the thing i would say is that the airlines are generally at the moment being particularly generous to customers yeah. um and in fact they're you know and i think that's you know they they appreciate the business at the moment they're not in this point of view where every customer is a pain in the neck just to have can they know um and they'll generally allow you to make changes to flights and and do things like that i know one person on my cayman workshop the airline actually put a new flight on, um, which allowed them to make a direct flight rather than having to take a connection. And wow. the airline put them onto the direct flight saying, you're going here, we'll put you on a direct flight rather than you having to take two flights. And oh, by the way, the direct flight is cheaper. So here's some money back. Wow. <laughs> which uh, yeah, that wow. doesn't normally happen, does it? No. <laughs> No, that's like those, the, the the upgrade to first class that happened to everybody else. Yeah, so, yes. so, <laughs> and generally the, the airlines the airlines are trying to facilitate you traveling, so mm. they do try to help you with all this process. They don't, you know, so you know, as long as you've done your testing and you've done your paperwork, they're going to be, you know, doing making things as easy as possible for you um, and the traveling. So you know, there are lots of positives to it, but there are some changes when you get back out there, but. Once you get underwater, the biggest change is just how precious it all feels, how great it feels to be back amongst those those creatures and, and doing the things that we love doing.
So, um, and every trip I've run has been so happy because everyone has been so pleased to be doing those things again. Yeah, no, that's my experience too. Yeah, well, I quite agree. So your ne- where's your next trip to, Alex? Um, I'm not traveling for a little while now um, because I have a very busy travel summer. And so that um, because of, of basically running trips that were previously postponed. So um, to, to be fair to my family, I'm making sure I'm home as much as I can be in the next month or so. So, yeah, I have um, Maldives is my next next escape. Excellent. Well, I, and I plan to be in Mexico in uh, in May, so that'll be my next trip, which uh, I'm looking forward to very much. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, and um, thanks again to Salaya Beach House for sponsoring this episode. Um, we really appreciate our sponsor support. Um, please feel free to add any comments, suggestions in the suggestions uh, box on here, and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm-hmm.